Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike, Phil Crafts Revival. Today I wanna to talk to you guys about the outside the waistband tourniquet holder. Um, I designed this a couple years ago based on some flaws that I saw in an outside the waistband tourniquet holder that I saw police officers and civilians using and then them failing during stress shoots, meaning manipulating your body in and around your waistline and these coming off the belts or off of people's battle belts uh, via Molly. So some inherent features that are different than everybody else's. One, we have a couple clips. Uh, we have a Molly adaptable clip and we have a belt adaptable clip. Now the Molly and the uh, belt adaptable clip can be simply removed by unscrewing the, the screw at the bottom that holds it in and it's actually hinged here uh, over the plastic to be able to retain it on the plastic. So this is also sprung steel, which is a lot better option than just plastic, I think. So when we go to this tourniquet in the front, we have a shroud that protects this male uh, Velcro portion that retains the windlass. We also have the ability to blow out the tourniquet from the front if you're in the fetal. Uh, let's say you're injured and you're collapsed on yourself, abdomen over the top of it, and then legs under the bottom, you could actually remove it from the front. I don't recommend doing that, uh, egressing it from the front, unless it's an extremist or emergency situation. Because if you routinely do that in training, you're gonna blast out the plastic portion of this. And even though this is resilient and bouncing back, it won't be so resilient when you're blasting out the front of it. So. The reason I want to do this video is there's a couple ways to fold a tourniquet to make it fit optimally inside the holder. Now, I only recommend two ways to fold a tourniquet based on one North American Rescue's uh, recommended tactic, but also mine, depending on the extremity, upper or lower body. Uh, remember, if you have a bleed, it's going to be in the extremity. That's what the tourniquet's for, it's to stop the bleed via an extremity, your arms and your legs. And so you're more likely to use this, which is the loop fold, if you're addressing a upper body wound, right? Because if, I, if my left arm's incapacitated, I could literally put this over and work it all the way up. Well, if you have a traumatic injury to your legs, putting a loop around your leg is going to be more difficult because, you know, in training, yeah, you could lift up your leg and hopscotch into it, but in real life, more likely, if it's especially near the femoral artery, upper thigh, um, you're gonna have a hard time moving that leg at all. So I recommend uh, two tactics. One, which is the way that I have it folded now, which is the way North American Rescue recommends it, which is I have this portion of it open to be able to turn the windlass and then retain it closed, right? So this is open and then I'm gonna retain about eight inches of tail on the back end of this folded. So it's through the buckle, folded eight inches, and then I'm gonna fold and collapse it on itself. So when I do this, it ends up being like this. And then if I retain this in the tourniquet holder, it's really simple. It just goes in there like a holster into a gun. And then I have this retained like this. Now, when, you're, when you retain it like this, um, the, the key is this shroud is protecting the Velcro. And then, obviously, you'll see it here pinched down. That's, that's a good way to carry it. Now, if we're thinking about lower extremities, um, look, if I'm going to range, maybe I'm more partial to addressing my lower extremities um, because if I'm wounded, um, more likely on a range, it might be from... Uh, somebody shooting down negligently or accidentally versus receiving an upper extremity wound. I, I don't know the statistics in, in uh, getting wounded on ranges, but the idea is I want you to start thinking about the highest probability. Like if you ride a motorcycle, for example, your legs are the highest probability of being affected because typically when you're thrown over your motorcycle, over the handlebars, your legs are going to hit the bars causing that uh, femoral compromise. So I'm gonna have it set up differently. So for the legs, I'm simply going to undo this all the way so it's completely open. 
And then I'm simply going to follow the contours of the buckle. And this has been folded a certain way the whole time, so it's going to be a little bit different. But I'll have it simply folded like this. Paint it. It fits like this. Now, what you might get is the tail, but that's fine. You could just simply put the tail over it and retain it like that. So that way, when I pull it out, the only thing I have to do, especially if I'm if I'm wounded, is grab the red piece and with my mouth, with my hand, and extend it. And then I could move it underneath my leg to address the wound. And you could do that one-handed or two-handed. So again, two different ways. One, through the buckle, eight inches of tail and the fold. Two, outside of the buckle, thinking about lower extremities and simply just folding it back on itself. Um, guys, the outside the waist main tourniquet holder is adaptable to belts. It's adaptable to molly as well via this proprietary ad adaptable piece. Um, I appreciate all the support and everything with getting products out like this. Uh, business is, is, a, uh, is a difficult journey and coming out with a product, for, especially for a small business, is definitely been the hardest thing that I've done in business. But I appreciate you guys' support. Uh, until next time, we'll see you guys. Stay alert, stay alive.